Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. So. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm sure glad I could get here. Art Linkletter is my very favorite. I think he's just wonderful. Personally, I can take him or leave him. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that way? What are you doing here? I was out shopping. It was hot, and my feet were killing me. <laughs> and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, Art Linkletter. <laughs> party. What a warm and wonderful audience you are. And you've come just in time to take part in a most interesting and curious experiment about human nature. I'm going to go looking for a volunteer. Whoop, look at that stoplight. Look at the red hair. It's beautiful. <laughs> are, is that, are you wearing one of those new wigs or is that the real color of your hair? Well, uh, shall we just say it's not a wig? <laughs> Would you mind standing up, please, and coming out in the aisle? Me? Yes. I'd like to have you on the show today. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> now, don't be nervous. Just tell me, what's your name? Uh, uh, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy Carmichael. Now, do you mind if I call you Lucy? Oh, not at all. Well, would you mind telling me your age? Not at all. Twenty-eight. <laughs> Uh, would you mind telling me your real age? I certainly would. <laughs> now tell me, Lucy, who do you think talks more, men or women? Oh, men, of course. They talk much more than women. You think women so? Women might have the reputation, but it's really just a false impression as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'm... Men are always talking about something, about business or baseball. I Any see. subject you well, name, they start um, talking and just can't get a word in edgewise. I, I, Politics, fishing tackle, guns, cars, or they just talk about themselves. That's it seems to me there's no comparison between the two, actually. Whenever I go out with a man, it's just a matter of sitting there and listening to him talk. Just the other day, I would... Well, well, goodbye, folks. Our time's up for today. <laughs> Lucy, this is just a half-hour program. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And she thinks that men talk more than women. Let's find out, shall we? How would you like to earn $200? $200? Oh, boy, I'd love that. Well, I'll give you $200 if for 24 hours you don't talk. You don't say a word, you can't utter a sound. Not a sound? And you can't let anybody know why you're not talking. Oh. You can't write any notes. No notes? No notes. Think you can do it? Oh, yeah. Yes, I think I can. You do. Uh, well, now, not that we don't trust you, but I think I'd better pick a volunteer out of our audience to kind of watch and report back to me if you do say a word or make it. Hey. You know, she'll have to stay with you the whole 24 hours, eat with you, work with you, do everything with you? Oh, well, I have a very small bathtub. <laughs> well, you'll get along, I'm sure. How about you, miss? Right over here. Would you stand up? Me? Yes. Oh. You, did you two come in? You don't know each other? No. Oh, no. No. Would you be able to spend 24 hours with Lucy? Well, if the price is right. Oh, I, think it, I think it will be, because in the event that Lucy says anything or makes even one sound, she'll forfeit the $200 and you will get $400. Oh, oh, you got yourself a stool pigeon. I'll do it. All right, that's fine, Miss... Um... Uh, Cosgrove, Ruth, oh, Ruth Lu Cosgrove. Uh, Lucy, Ruth. How do you do? I uh, hope you'll be very happy together for the... 24 hours. 
Now, Lucy, get ready, if you'll excuse the expression, to shut up. <laughs> because the 24 hours starts in just 10 seconds. Oh, well, I'm just on my lunch hour. I got to get back to the bank, but I'm off tomorrow. Can I do it then? Oh, no, no. The 24 hours starts right now. Mm. You think we're being a little rough on Lucy? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll give her a little leeway. Lucy, during the 24 hours, should an emergency arise, you know, some extreme necessity, you can say one word, but just one word. Okay? Okay. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get on with the rest of the show, I think you and Miss Cosgrove can leave. So, goodbye, Miss Cosgrove. Goodbye, Mr. Linkletter. <laughs> goodbye, Lucy. Did you say goodbye? <laughs> say goodbye, audience. There they go. I have a couple of secrets to let you in on. In the first place, we have a few delightful surprises planned for her in her apartment tonight. Oh. Then, in the second place, Miss Cosgrove is an actress who works for me. Michael, do you know where the escrow papers are for the Bradbury account? <laughs> well, gee, I'm glad you know. <laughs> but the reason I asked is because I would like to know, too. Could you tell me? I see it's going to be your little secret. <laughs> now, Mrs. Carmichael, why can't you tell me where the escrow papers are for the Bradbury account? <laughs> you lost your voice? Oh, uh, laryngitis? <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, uh, maybe you could write me a note telling me where they are. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, uh, you hurt your arm? Well, you seem to be enjoying poor help. <laughs> now, Mrs. Carmichael, I don't have time for games. I want those escrow papers. Now, where are they? <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> Who is she? Friend of yours? <laughs> well, Mrs. Carmichael, I don't mind a brief social visit, but after all, this is a place of business. Would you ask her to leave? Uh, uh, oh, oh, that's not, uh, Well, would you indicate for her to leave? to appear rude, but couldn't you visit Mrs. Carmichael at her apartment? This is a place of business. 
No, I think I'd better stick around. Oh? Just before she lost her voice, she pleaded with me to stay with her at all times. She said she doesn't trust her boss. <laughs> Madam, I am her boss. Oh. Well, then her nickname for you certainly fits. Hiya, Fatso! <laughs> Michael, unless you have a reasonable explanation, you can start looking for a new job immediately. And stop staring at me like an overage orphan Annie. <laughs> now then, I don't know whether you've lost your voice or your mind, but I have taken all I am going to take. But... Chat, so speaking. <laughs> Moody speaking. Dr. Metcalf's here to see you. Oh, well, tell him I'll be along in a few minutes. On second thought, I'll be right in. Oh, and doctor, before we transact our business, would you step in here a minute, please? <laughs> I'd like you to meet one of our employees. Oh, fine. Uh, Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> Over here, please. <laughs> Over here. There we are. Right. That's fine. Now, uh, doctor, Mrs. Carmichael has been acting very strangely, even for her. <laughs> She seems to have a bad case of laryngitis. Yes. I wonder if you could give her a quick look, please. Why, well, of course. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Mrs. Carmichael, I'm just going to look at your throat. It won't hurt at all. Mrs. Carmichael, would you please have a seat? I run across this on occasion. She probably never overcame her fear of doctors when she was a child. Yeah. Oh. Well, now, Mrs. Carmichael, this is not the bogeyman. And heaven knows it's been a long, long time since you were a child. <laughs> now, sit! Now, Mrs. Carmichael, would you please say, ah? Well, at least open your mouth. <laughs> but, Mr. Mooney, sometimes cases like this are psychosomatic. Psychosomatic. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. In other words, it's not anything physical, but something in her mind. Oh, but that would require her having a mind. <laughs> it could be a recent shock of some kind, or possibly her subconscious recalled a, a frightening experience when she was a child. Mm. Oh, you were frightened when you were a child. <laughs> Tell us about it. Bringing the cause out into the open might affect a cure. Well, uh, uh, what are you going to do? You, oh, you'll, you'll act, act it all, all out. That's the whole sad story. Oh. All right, yeah, yeah. Well, of course it happened to you. Oh, oh you, you, you so, so small. Yeah, no, uh, time, uh, yeah. You, oh, little, little, little. Little girl, you were little... Uh, a three, three... Oh, a three-year-old... You were three years old, a little girl. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a little three-year-old girl. Oh, isn't that pretty? She's mowing the lawn. <laughs> oh, you're riding a scooter. Oh, she's... Um, uh, I know! You're pushing a carriage. We're really a baby carriage. I was going to say that. <laughs> all, right, all right. Now, little girl, three years, and the baby carriage is yesterday, and you lift it up, and uh, something in it. Oh, yeah, something. Uh, uh, your baby brother is in it. <laughs> your baby sister. <laughs> well, what, what, what's in the carriage? What? Uh, uh, oh. A robot. I don't know. I know your father, he was drunk. No, uh, what's that? It's uh, stiff and uh, oh, oh, I don't know. A doll, a doll. You were wheeling a doll in your baby carriage. Who said you could play? <laughs> Now, the whole thing, now, you're a little girl, three years old, pushing the baby carriage with the doll in the baby carriage, and she's gay and happy and going along. I wonder where she's got... Oh, she stopped. She sees something. What does she see? Oh, what? Uh, uh, 
Uh, uh, seeing something. Uh, sure. Oh, you're looking at something. Uh, uh, gazing through the bushes. The bushes. No. Uh, uh, Venetian blinds. Bars. Right, looking but, through bars. Uh, looking through bars. Through bars. You were in jail. <laughs> behind the bars. All right. Well, uh, behind the bars, what does she see? What? Do... Oh, that's easy. A monkey. A monkey. Hey, uh, uh, stretching. Monkey doing it. Oh, he's itching and he's doing exercise. He's a restless monkey. A gorilla! Uh, 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 a gorilla behind bars and he... You were at the zoo! Uh -huh. Wonderful. All right, now the whole thing. The little girl with the pram and the little doll in the carriage. She's going to the zoo and she pushes the carriage up and oh, she stops. Now, she sees the gorilla. The gorilla in the cage. The gorilla. The gorilla grabbed her. No. Well, the, the doll. The gorilla grabbed the doll. I said it first. I said it first. <laughs> the, gorilla, the, the gorilla grabbed the doll. Yes. And he, he starts to eat the doll. Oh, he tears it limb from limb. The legs, the arms. Oh, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. Oh, that, that gorilla ate her little doll. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, this is obviously psychosomatic. Oh. Now, on occasions, it takes another shock to bring them right out of it. Oh, uh, 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 doctor, come with me. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, doctor. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me go. <laughs> And just think, only 23 more hours to go without saying a word. Take him up! talk, I get $400. But I like you. It's nothing personal. I really do like you. Well, just to show you how much I like you, I bought myself a beautiful makeup case today, and I want you to have it. Here. Oh, Lucy, come on. Let's be friends. Please, take it. Please. Come on. Telephoning me. So you're Lucy Carmichael, huh? How 
How dare you try and steal my husband? You red-headed hussy! You homewrecker, you ought to be ashamed of yourself! Yes, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Listen, if you really want my husband, honey, you can have him! <laughs> you can have his dirty laundry, too! <laughs> Carmichael live here. I'm from the Acme Pet Shop. We have something for you. Come on, Hilda. Say hello to your new mommy. <laughs> experiment it's been. We picked the lady out of the audience, Lucy Carmichael. She was not to talk or utter a sound for 24 hours. And now we're going to find out whether she made it or not. Would you step out here, ladies, please? Oh, my. Oh. She looks uh, a little bedraggled, and I understand she even spent a night in jail. But the question we're all interested in, has she kept her mouth shut so far? Ruth? Has she? She certainly has. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I signed up. Oh, boy, I made it. I made it. Wait a minute. Me. I made it. Hold I won. What, what do you mean? What is this? My alarm clock. I set it for, for my when my 24 hours was up, and I oh, won. Oh, Lucy, this is terrible. This is awful. What's awful? According to my watch, which is the official time, you still have three minutes to go. Oh, no, that's impossible. My, my alarm clock's always right. It's never fast. It is now. I set it three minutes ahead. Oh, no. That's the meanest thing I ever heard Don't of. Don't hit her, Lucy. You get the money. You win. That was just a trick we pulled. Oh, a trick. That's right. Miss Cosgrove is actually a member of my staff. Oh, no. Yes, and so are all the other people you met in your apartment last night. <laughs> Ruth, say goodbye to Lucy. Goodbye, Lucy, and forgive me. All right, I forgive you. <laughs> Bye. Congratulations, Lucy. You did it. Of course, you lost your job oh, while you were yes, doing it. Oh, yes, I did. Well, we can fix that. Mr. Mooney, would you step out, please, sir? Is Mr. Mooney here? Yes, he's right here. We explained it all to Mr. Mooney, and he has something to tell you. Uh, hello, Mrs. Oh! <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, under the circumstances, you can have your job back. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mooney. By the way, Mr. Mooney, you look like a good sport. How would you like to try a little experiment and win some money, huh? Oh, the money, you're fine. Good, yes. <laughs> I understand that on occasion you get a little upset with Lucy. Oh, you can say that again. Now, Mr. Mooney, if you can keep your temper and not get peeved at her for 24 hours, you'll win $200. But... If you as much as raise your voice to her during that time, she will get the $200, okay? Fine. Time starts right now. 
Good luck, Fatso. Fatso! Yes! Yes! I get $400!